Hi! On the 3rd of January 2019, China's Chang'e 4 spacecraft soft landed on the dark side of the moon. The first spacecraft to ever do this. It deployed a little robotic moon rover, as well as having a radio telescope on board, and a little greenhouse with seeds and fruit fly eggs. Having a radio telescope on the other side of the moon is amazing because the moon shields it from the Earth's radio signals, which are all over the place. We're spatting those things out constantly. As for the greenhouse, the seeds sprouted, but then everything died shortly after and the flies were never able to hatch because as night set in on the moon, some of the equipment failed and it just became too cold. But wait, that must mean that there's night and day on the moon. So why is it called the dark side if it's not always dark? Well, the dark side of the moon is not really a correct name. It's more just the far side, but to talk about why there's a close side and a far side, we have to talk about tidal locking. Gravity does some weird stuff, and tidal locking and resonance are two of these things. When you have a smaller object orbiting around a bigger object, gravity can do some weird stuff depending on how close they are to each other and how different their sizes are. Take Mercury, for example. It's orbiting in this weird egg-shaped orbit near the sun, and because it's near the sun but also so much smaller than the sun, the sun's gravity makes it do this weird dance where it spins three times for every two orbits around the sun. Basically, Mercury only has three days every two years. This is called a 3-2 spin orbit resonance. But what the moon has is a bit different. When you have a considerably sized thing orbiting the Earth, or any other planet for that matter, if it's smaller than the Earth, what happens is the closer side of it experiences different gravity to the far side of it. In this case, the closer side of the moon has a bit more gravitational pull toward the Earth than the far side of the moon. And if the moon was any closer, it would encounter this thing called the Roche limit, where the inside wants to go faster than the outside, which means the whole thing just kind of get, kind of get pulled apart, like Saturn's rings were a moon that just kind of got pulled apart. Planets and moons aren't really structurally glued together by anything except gravity, so if something disrupts that gravity, it'll just kind of go poof and, and disperse. By the way, if you're curious where you can feel Earth's gravity the strongest, the answer is where you're standing. Uh, if you go below into the Earth, you actually feel less gravity because more of the Earth is above you at that point instead of below you. It's interesting. Anyway, as I mentioned before in my video on orbits and the sun, if you're closer to an object, your height starts getting transferred into speed, so you go faster in an orbit closer to it, which is why this effect can occur. What the moon does is called tidal locking. One face of the moon is always facing us, so as the moon goes around us, it's spinning at the same rate in its orbit. The dark side of the moon is just called that because it was dark to our knowledge. We couldn't see it until we went around it. Here's a great video taken by the Discover probe, which is way, way further out away from Earth than the moon is. And you can see the far side lit up 100% by the sun in this picture. Now in recent years, we found the moon to be a much more interesting place than we once thought, even during the Apollo era with the samples we got back from the moon. The Indian Chandrayaan lunar probe actually found ice, water ice, all over the moon in small quantities, but there's, there's loads of it there. That coupled with a study that found that there's probably a lot of area on the moon that's in permanent shadow from the sun means that it's very likely that there are even larger water ice deposits all over the moon that we could use if we were gonna go there. Now this is gonna be super useful as humanity starts to look toward the moon as a proving ground for technologies that will be used as humans venture out further into the solar system. That and SpaceX does appear to still be on schedule for its Starship passenger launch around the moon in 2023. So things are gonna be really heating up around the moon neighborhood. I can't wait to see all the pictures and test results from these flights because things are speeding up, man. Things are speeding up. SpaceX has been working on its Starship Hopper test vehicle, which will be doing simple tests, kind of like the Grasshopper they did for Falcon 9. Pictures have just emerged of the first Raptor engine arriving at the test site, ready to be integrated with the vehicle so they can start doing their first hop tests. The first test hop flight things, probably only a few meters off the ground, but they are scheduled for next week. So, I mean, that's some crazy progress. I can't wait to see what happens when they put another two engines on that thing and start doing suborbital tests into space and coming back down to the same landing site. All right, that's it for me today for the moon stuff. I want to say thank you to my patrons. Thank you for sticking with me while I was doing staff stuff for Nordic FuzzCon. You could see the video we did for that here. Or here, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done this before. But yeah, well, I made a crazy video. It took like three months for their intro for the opening ceremony. Um, that's where I've been all this time. Ugh. Anyway, subscribe if you like this, and that like button is also there. The dislike button is, but I mean, space, dude, it's space. You don't dislike space, come on. Anyway, I love all of you, and I want you to have a good day. This has been Hayu. Bye!